Hey what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to the episode number 63 of the series of tutorial on how to build a premium theme for WordPress. Welcome again. In this tutorial, we're going to start uh, fixing a bunch of issues that we currently have with our theme. And I'm talking about the responsive issues, because as I said in some previous lesson, we were just coding and we were kind of ignoring the overall result and overall look of our theme. We were mostly focus on coding all the features, all the functionalities and making sure that our backend was properly styled and properly built. Right now we we basically did everything for the back end so now it's time to take care of the front end and I'm going to start uh, jumping around a bunch of sections and I'm going to just simply take a look of how this overall website works on tablet and mobile and going to fix things along the way. Of course, in a normal situation, in a more regular situation, you would have also a design version of your theme in a tablet version and mobile version. But right now we don't have it. So we're going to style the responsive part based on what we actually see. Uh, this is not the best thing ever, but let's keep doing it. So when it comes to test a website on a responsive environment, you should always test it on a real device or on a real tablet or a real mobile or a smartphone. But right now, just to start and to fix all, or the most obvious mistakes, we can use the browser to simulate that environment. And uh, a lot of users or a lot of developers I see doing this, like shrinking and readapting the the size of the, the window browser. But there's a better method, especially recently with Google Chrome and Firefox, we have this responsive uh, option that we can activate and we can actually uh, use it properly to fix or change the size of the page without resizing our browser. And also here you can specify um, fixed width and height to simulate the most common uh, a resolution of um, a real device. On Google Chrome, you have something similar. I think it's something kind of better. Also, you can that are, you know, like simulating network speed and it's kind of super cool. But for now, I'm using Firefox, so we will keep doing this. Uh, let's give it a resolution like sort of a tablet. The first thing to notice is the um, overflow of the objects outside our um, area of the website or our area of the browser. The browser, And this is one of the most common mistake that I see uh, sometimes uh, when I access a website on mobile. And by overflow, I mean an object or an element that goes outside the actual size of our screen of our window. You can notice this if like a scroll bar appears somewhere or if you try to scroll on the side and not just vertically but also horizontally, we have this gap that it shouldn't happen like this should be fixed. A lot of users, a lot of other developers, they don't bother in fixing this and understanding why it doesn't work and they just simply activate, they manually activate an overflow X hidden. So they're forcing the body to not have an overflow. So I'm trying to push it to the right, but it's not happening. But this is a quick and dirty fix that you could do it if you don't want to spend too much time, but it's not the best because you still have an element that goes outside your actual size of the browser. So you should actually fix it. You shouldn't do this, all this type of like, weird tricks or stuff like extra style to just like avoid a mistake that you can simply resolve by analyzing your HTML structure. So let's do it. Let's check which element is causing the overflow. And the easiest way to find an element like this is to uh, causing the overflow. So scrolling to the right and see the extra space that we shouldn't have and uh, grabbing and using the selector, the element selector and going through all the elements that we have. Luckily, the browsers are really helpful for this because they highlight the element and you can see if an element is going outside. And in my case, I have the menu bar that you can see this is the container of the menu bar. But if I highlight on the UL, the order list element, you see that the blue area, it's 
actually spanning out. So if I select this element and I check the CSS attributes, I notice that the nav bar by default of Bootstrap comes with a negative margin right and left of 15 pixels. This is due because the nav bar usually should be used inside a row element or a container, that a container has the same gutter of padding but pushing the elements inside. My navbar is not inside a container because I'm using a custom nav container to have a position absolute. So what I have to do, basically I have to update these navbar sunsets, the navbar sunset that is the container that wraps this UL element and I should give it a padding right and left of the same size, of the same amount of pixel that is going to a negative direction. So I'm pushing the border of this container to have those 15 pixel to the light, right and to the left that it's causing the extra overflow. So let's do it. Let's check the navbar sunset and see if you can fix it by adding padding 0, 15 pixel. And you just saw what happened here. We don't have the overflow anymore. The other solution that you could have, you could force the margin left and right of this container to be zero instead of minus 15 pixel. And both methods are okay. So now if I deactivate the padding 0, 15, I don't have the issue anyway, even if I don't have the extra padding that I just deactivated. Both of these solutions are identical, but I suggest you to respect the logic of Bootstrap and if you have to do the margin left and right, always apply this um, extra CSS attribute to a custom container and not to the default navbar nav because if you then in the future decide to or the user decides to use the navbar nav in a way that Bootstrap allows it or in a way you should use it with Bootstrap, having a class that overwrites globally the nav or nav with the margin zero could cause a, some problem uh, if you try to style it properly and create a good responsive environment. So in my case, I'm gonna go with the original approach that is using the navbar sunset container and adding 15 pixel of padding. So let's copy these, let's access our code editor and inside the sunset.css, search for this padding 0, 15 pixel, and let's save it. Let's refresh, and of course, we don't have any mistake, and that's perfect. Let's keep scrolling down and see if something is wrong. We have like proper padding, proper margin, so it's pretty good. Let's shrink down a little bit to reach the point where our uh, font size doesn't work anymore. So here we have a couple of issues. First of all, if the menu, it's too big, if we have like five or six of different elements, this shouldn't remain flat like this. So it should stack or should disappear and having an icon like this for the same menu. So right now this icon, it's used to open the sidebar and we can keep it like that. We have to keep it like that, but we can use this functionality to at this point when we reach like probably um, 780, so we go below mobile, completely hiding this menu, shrinking a little bit the header because it's too big and then uh, visualizing the menu inside the sidebar. So let's do it and it's gonna be pretty quick and we're gonna use a bunch of predefined CSS classes from Bootstrap. So first of all, we can use the default classes of Bootstrap called visible with a specific media query. In our case, we can have, for example, this one to be hidden during extra small and then hidden during small. So if we uh, leave it like that and we increase a little bit, you notice that when we reach a thousand pixel of width, the navbar reappear again, but when we go down, the navbar disappear. Uh, I think small, it's a little bit too much. This is a small issue with the media queries of Bootstrap, but hidden excess is pretty good because extra small for Bootstrap starts from 780 pixel. So it goes from tablet below and it's fine. That's what we want. So hidden excess will force the menu to be hidden only when we reach the point where our in a tablet situation on 
in a smaller environment of a tablet. And basically we can use the same classes. We can duplicate this menu, put it in the sidebar by default and using the same classes, but in reverse. So we can put it as visible access. So let's do it. Let's access our code editor again. Let's access our header.php file. Let's scroll down and let's check this navbar container here. Let's put hidden access. That's perfect. Then let's copy the code that WP nav menu that initialize the menu our primary theme location so we want to print the same exact menu but in the sidebar so let's access the sidebar.php file and here right before the dynamic sidebar section let's put this wp menu and for now let's leave it like that of course the menu classes are going to be kind of weird and the sunset walk and nav probably shouldn't work because um, it's it has a different style, but we'll see. Let's take a look <laughs> what's happening here. Let's refresh. It's going to be pretty ugly. So if we open it, we have the menu. Of course, it doesn't really work. It's all styled in a wrong way. But the thing that we can do first, we have to use the default class of Bootstrap to style it and put it stacked in a proper way. So let's go back in a code editor and let's use a bunch of classes that are going to be really helpful. First of all, let's create a div and let's give it a class of visible dash access. So I'm going to say that whatever content it's inside this div is going to be visible only when we reach the size of extra small. And that's great. The other class that I want to apply here is the default class of bootstrap called navbar dash collapse collapse and this class is going to convert this menu the style of the menu into a stacked uh, element so all the menu items are going to be stacked in an order list let's save it let's go back in our front end let's refresh and if i open it now it's invisible it's not it's not here you can see we have it our visible access but it's displaying none if i keep shrinking down this thing and i reach one point that the menu disappears from the main area and appears inside our sidebar. That's perfect. It pushes everything down. We have the collapse style that creates these stacked level and our walker nav class because we followed the logic of WordPress and we followed the logic of bootstrap styling works also in this case. Of course, these rollovers are wrong. It's just like simply um, an issue with uh, CSS that we can easily fix but the fact that our menu works and of course if we click on content we're going to go on a content page if we click on about we're going to go on about page so everything works and we just a couple of classes we didn't write anything custom we just a couple of default classes with responsive stuff of bootstrap and our walker nav class that works perfectly we created a menu that works in responsive also on mobile and that's perfect another thing that i want to do is shrinking down a little bit this header that right now i think i define it at 300 pixels or something yes 326 so let's have the header container and we want to say to the header container that when we reach excess so when we reach this type of size so in our case it goes to 768 pixel below these these header containers should be, instead of 326, should be around 260, I guess, or maybe even less. Let's go 200. 200 wide. That's perfect. So let's look for this class inside our sunset.scss. And here, thanks to SAS, we can create a media query directly inside the class. So I noticed that a couple of developers, they like to create a new file called responsive.scss where they put all the responsive classes inside that file. But I found it kind of confusing, especially when you have a really long style to keep track of all the styling. So you have the header container here, and then you have another file called responsive where you have another class declare header container, but just inside the med media query and it gets kind of confusing i like to keep everything in the same situation the same location so if i have the head and container that by default comes with all these classes but at one point when i reach a specific media query i want to change this height 
I can write it directly inside the class itself thanks to SAS. So let's do it by writing at media space open and close the regular brackets max width column 768 pixel and then let's open and close the curly brackets and here we can redeclare the height but in this case we want a height of 180 pixels no we said 200 pixels okay but of course you can put whatever you want and that's it let's go back in our front end let's check if it worked let's refresh now we have the height at 200 if we increase over 600 or oh, 600 768 or these okay actually the bootstrap class gets activated at 767 so let's change that value so 767 let's refresh and that's perfect look at that so now when we reach that media query that I specify the same as bootstrap at that point boom the header collapses completely and gets the height that I defined and in my opinion this is a way better approach to use media queries inside the classes another improvement that we could apply here is having a variable for this type of size and it's the default settings of bootstrap that of course right now we're pulling the bootstrap already compiled and minified in css but if we were pulling bootstrap in a css as css non-compiled version we would have access to all those variables well we don't so we have to declare those variables by ourselves here in the variables.scss we can create a media queries type of section in here we can define a bunch of variables so first of all it's going to be access and it's going to be equal to 767 pixels and then for now let's leave it at that of course you can put small you can create the variable medium or all the other variables with all the other values that we want to use but for now with this variable dollar excess that it stands for extra small we can copy it and we can replace it here and that's perfect so right now thanks to this we can repeat this media query by having this excess instead of writing every time 767 pixel and if in the future we update bootstrap or we change bootstrap to with a foundation or another css frameworks that comes with a different resolution or different media query we have or we can update all our media queries by updating only one single variable in the variables file instead of all the declarations that we have of the media queries and that's perfect let's save it and let's check in the front end that if it's actually working ah oh, beautiful look at that so this is the initial part of our lesson about making this theme fully responsive in uh, the next lesson we're going to keep going we're going to uh, check all the different sections and we're going to fix a bunch of issues that i'm really seeing here so it's kind of like really annoying but another little homework i'm not gonna uh, record any uh, tutorial about styling the menu this is pretty standard it's just like standard css about rollover background color and text color so you can style this menu as you want you can put a central line you can put the chevron completely attached to the right you can do pretty much whatever you want so i'm not gonna style the menu uh, it, that is gonna be up to you it's gonna be like a little homework that you can do and in future lessons, we're going to keep styling and improving our theme to make it fully responsive for every resolution and every device. So it's pretty much it for today's lesson. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes to check the support me page on my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.